So welcome back to Child Health Safety and Nutrition. Uh, this is assignment four. Uh, today's assignment will be about uh, safety. So let's move to the first slide. So in a preschool, in a daycare, in a school classroom, and in even at home, injuries are the leading cause of death and disability among children in Canada. It's important to know what strategies you can put in place at your center to prevent injuries. There are a number of areas that I will cover in this PowerPoint. So we'll look at child development and injuries, common causes of injuries, cycling and helmet safety, trampoline safety, playground safety, pedestrian safety, product safety, and uh, even talk a little bit about tobacco, tobacco and secondhand smoke. So child development and injuries. So babies can fall from high surfaces, such as change tables and high chairs when they lean over, uh, when they learn to roll over. At nine months of age, the risk of for poisoning and choking increases because uh, a child's natural tendency is to put objects in their mouth. Uh, toddlers are particularly prone to falls from height because their climbing ability is not matched by their balancing or reasoning ability. Their mobility and curiosity makes toddlers more susceptible to burn scalding, and scalding injuries. Toddlers are also continue to put objects in their mouth, putting them at risk for poisoning and choking. Preschoolers uh, continue to develop increased coordination and motor skills, enabling them to climb and run faster. Falls continue to cause injuries, particularly from running on playground structures. Preschoolers are at risk for burn and scald injuries because of their interest in modeling parent behavior and staff behavior. For example, if they see um, a parent using a stove, they want to use it in the same way. Common causes of injuries are falls. Falls are the leading cause of injury related emergency room visits and hospitalization for children. Infants and young children fall for different reasons depending on their age and stages for development. Common causes of falls include furniture, such as change tables, high chairs, counters, as mentioned before, slips and falls uh, down the stairs, uh, playground activities, equipment such as slides and swings through windows, activities such as running into stationary objects or other children, uh, sports and recreational activities, um, outside play. So falls causing concussions. Any blow to the head, face or neck or a blow to the body that transmits a force to the head can cause a concussion. Without identification and proper management, a concussion can result in permanent brain damage and in rare occasions, uh, even death. So be very aware of the signs, the symptoms of a concussion, and know what to do if one is suspected. So to prevent falls, provide um, active supervision. Never leave a child unattended on high surfaces, such as a change table. Keep one hand on an infant during diaper change. This protects the baby from rolling off a change table. Every time a child is placed in a high chair, Fasten the waist belt and any straps between the child's legs securely. Make sure the tray is locked securely in place. Keep the high chair a safe distance away from walls, doors, windows, and appliances. A child could use their feet to push against the wall furniture, causing the high chair to tip over. Keep floors free of clutter or anything that may cause a child to trip and fall. Watch out for slippery floors. Rubber sole slippers or shoes are safer than socks on smooth floors. Wipe up smells, water on floors quickly. Keep furniture away from windows to keep children from climbing up and out of windows. Use appropriate safety products such as safety gates to prevent children from falling downstairs and window guards. Ensure children are, part are participating in age appropriate activities always. So always keep hazardous substances uh, and poisons away from children, such things as um, uh, rubbing alcohol, cleaning products, 
arts and crafts supplies, and even plants. Uh, we want to prevent poisonings. Uh, we want to provide active supervision, uh, keep all hazardous substances, poisons in their original containers and locked away or in a location inaccessible to children. This includes staff purses, backpacks, which may contain medications and cosmetics. You want to keep all products with small magnets and batteries out of reach uh, of young children. Uh, read the labels on all products before use and follow directions uh, carefully. Uh, identify all plants uh, in the child care setting. Plants that are known to be toxic should be removed from the center uh, and teach children at an early age about the danger, dangers of certain plants and how to recognize these plants. So we want to prevent burns and skulls, and we definitely want to ensure uh, that children um, uh, uh, don't drown. Uh, babies under one year old are more likely to drown in a bathtub than in any other place. So all children are at risk for drowning, but younger children under five years are more at risk because they can drown in as little as 2.5 centimeters. So 2.5 centimeters is just really a small length um, of water. So um, children are attracted to water but cannot understand the risks. Uh, they lack balance and coordination are at, and are at an increased risk of falling into bodies of water, have lungs that are smaller than adult lungs and fill quickly. Um, preventing drowning, provide active supervision when children are or in a round water and never leave them alone in a pool or a bathtub even for a minute. Teach children the following, uh, walk, don't run near water play areas. Do not push others in or around, <clears throat> excuse me, water play areas and never bring a uh, glass near water play areas. Never use riding toys near water play areas and ensure that there is a first aid kit and a phone within close proximity of any water play. <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, some other common hazards, uh, high risk foods. Foods that have a small round shape such as hot dogs, peanuts, candies, grapes, or popcorn uh, are can um, be hazardous for children. Small objects such as parts on toys, button batteries, magnets, balloons, and plastic bags. Sleep environment like loose blanketing, pillows, stuffed toys, unsafe, unsafe sleeping positions, ropes, blinds, cribs, or beds. They all are choking or suffocation um, hazards. So again, always provide active uh, supervision. Always supervise children when they eat. Make sure they sit down, sit up straight and eat slowly. Uh, keep these items out of reach. Such things we, I've already mentioned like buttons, latex balloons, plastic bags, stuffed animals with buttons or glassy eyes, noses, button batteries, magnets, or toys containing small parts. Uh, watch out for long cords and window coverings. Uh, pull cords and blinds should be sh uh, cut short and tied out of reach. Remove draw drawstrings from clothing. Uh, clip mittens to coats instead of attaching them with string. Make sure cribs and beds meet safety standards. Um, very, very important uh, that um, children are are supervised at all times. Um, let's look at the slide. Uh, it says safety is everyone's responsibility and this is no joke. Uh, safety is is the first uh, critical component of, of any program. So closely supervise all children one at a time uh, on a trampoline. If you have a trampoline, um, 80% uh, of injuries happen when multiple children are bouncing at once. Don't jump onto or off a trampoline. Uh, spine injuries can occur during flips or somersaults. Ankles, elbows, and, and heads are most commonly hurt. So let's go on to uh, slide, the next slide. This is about uh, the playground. So Although playgrounds offer a setting for children to be active, they can be a source of injury. The result of falls can be serious, ranging from broken bones to head injury. Playground deaths are rare and almost 
always caused by strangulation. Strangulation can happen when clothing such as drawstrings, scarves, or a skipping rope get caught on a play equipment, usually at the top of a slide. Helmets should not be worn when playing on a playground equipment as they can get caught on equipment and become a strangulation risk. Let's take a look, a uh, closer look at the slide. So prevent uh, playground injuries. Uh, always provide uh, active supervision. So again, let's look at the slide. So uh, children should always come down the slide, okay? Uh, so looking uh, at number one, uh, the supervisor is maintaining a visual line of sight with children. Number two, the opening of the playground equipment should be less than 3.5 inches or larger than 9 inches, so a head can't get caught. And again, uh, in Canada, we're very lucky uh, that the government has uh, has rules and uh, strict guidelines uh, with playground equipment. Um, when, But there still are metal slides, number three. So make sure that you check and make sure it's not too hot when children are going to go down. Number four, make sure kids wear shoes or sneakers in the playground to protect their feet. Number five, the length of soft surface under swing should be double the height of the swing set. So again, we're very fortunate in Canada uh, that we have stringent rules around playground equipment. Choose playground equipment that's right for the child's size. Toddlers can't use metal swings, seesaws, and slides. Uh, rubber, place rubber mulch mats or soft surfaces under the playground to cushion falls. Uh, many daycares and preschools have their own equipment, so this is something that can be done. Inspect playground and sandbox for splintered wood, broken glass, sharp metal, uncovered chains or loose bolts, wet spots or missing ladder rungs. Uh, make sure also that a cat hasn't gotten in there and uh, there aren't any feces. Remove necklaces, number nine, scarves, purses, as clothes with drawstrings or clothing that, that may get caught. And number 10, apply sunscreen on kids before letting them play in the sun. And obviously we don't want kids uh, running into traffic. So playground rules, are very important. Um, th these are also posters that you can put up in your center. Um, one of the things that we want to teach children is help others if they get hurt, get a teacher, slide down the slide, uh, help to clean up after play is finished, play gently together, include others, line up and wait for the teacher, and share, share toys. Uh, pedestrian safety. Uh, let's look at the next slide. Okay, pedestrian safety. Often, uh, young children are going on walks um, or are going on a field trip. So it's very important uh, that we teach children uh, basics of pedestrian safety. So younger children are at a risk of injury because they have not yet developed the cognitive and physical skills to cope with the many challenges of traffic. So again, we wanna provide active supervision. We wanna teach pedestrian safety. We wanna integrate pedestrian safety messages into crafts, games, and songs. Use teachable moments during outdoor walks to emphasize pedestrian safety messages to children based on the child's development. For example, a two-year-old riding in a stroller can understand that cars belong on the road and people belong on the sidewalk. Let's take, uh, take a look at slide three. Um, so we, when we're outside, we want to wear bright clothes so drivers can see me. That's an important message to give kids. Another message is I cross the street with a grown-up until at least age 10. I hold out my arm and wait for the driver in each lane to stop before crossing the street. I stay out of the danger zone around the school bus if you have a school bus at your center. So it's really important uh, that uh, children be seen, that they keep their heads up, that they use a crosswalk, and eye contact is key. It's very important that we are good role models for children, so we're always using crosswalks. And we're talking out loud as, as we're crossing the street, so to teach children um, how to safely navigate traffic. Um, 
According to the doctors of BC, 2,300 BC pedestrians are injured in car crashes every year. Um, so again, very important that we teach pedestrian safety. So there's other things that uh, teachers can do as well. We can uh, continue to talk to kids about how to be safe and aware while walking, tell kids to look left, right, and left again when crossing the street, teach them to never run or dart out into the street or cross between parked cars, remind kids to make eye contact with uh, drivers before crossing in front of them and watch out for cars that are turning or backing up. It's always best to walk on sidewalks or paths. If there are no sidewalks, walk facing traffic as, as far to the left as possible. Every child is different, but developmentally, it can be hard for kids to judge speed and distance of cars until age 10. So cross streets at corners using traffic signals and crosswalks uh, most injuries happen mid-block or someplace other than intersection. So um, let's uh, just briefly talk about um, uh, tobacco and secondhand smoke. Um, so it's really important uh, that uh, no one smokes or vapes around children. Um, we need to ensure that everyone is aware that smoking and vaping is prohibited and you need to post uh, no smoking or no vaping signs at all entrances, exits, washrooms, and other appropriate locations uh, in, in and around your, your center. Uh, we all know the dangers of secondhand smoke and vaping. Um, we know that uh, secondhand smoke also known as environmental tobacco smoke is made up of both exhaled smoke and the smoke that comes from the burning end of a cigarette. And that there, there are 4,000 chemicals in secondhand smoke, including lead, carbon monoxide, arsenic, and ammonia. Secondhand smoke is more harmful to children because of their developing lungs and immune system. Uh, and secondhand smoke can inhibit the growth and development of an unborn baby resulting in low birth weight and a greater, greater likelihood of problems during pregnancy and delivery. In infants and children, secondhand smoke is known to increase the occurrence of ear infections, pneumonia, bronchitis, tonsillitis, asthma, and sudden infant death syndrome. Vaping can increase exposure to chemicals that could harm um, uh, your health, including possible lung damage. So let's talk about indoor and outdoor safety and the questions that a child care provider should ask themselves. Let's go on to the next slide. So let's look at uh, indoor safety. So always do a safety check each morning uh, before children arrive to ensure that your indoor space is safe. And this should be happening throughout the day as well. So Ask yourself the following questions. Are all sharp or breakable items out of children's reach? Are cleaning products, medications, and other poisons locked away in closets or cabinets? Are small toys that could cause choking out of the reach of all children under three? Um, in, have I inspected all toys to make sure that there are no broken or loose pieces or rough edges? Are there doors, gates, or other barriers to prevent children from falling downstairs? Are shelves and other tall pieces of furniture angled to the wall to prevent tipping? Are sharp edges and corners of furniture covered to protect children? Am I ready to supervise children's play carefully and redirect them if they begin to do something unsafe? And uh, in terms of outdoor uh, safety, uh, to ensure the outdoor play is safe, uh, follow these guidelines. Playground equipment should be the appropriate size for the children in your group. Infants and toddlers are at greater risk on high platforms and tall slides. Uh, playground surfacing needs to be soft and resilient to cushion falls. And we need to teach uh, children outdoor safety rules, like uh, using playground equipment appropriately, staying a safe distance away from moving swings, watching out for others when who are riding tricycles or bicycles, wait for the group before crossing the street, watch for cars and streets and parking lots, and stay inside designated areas. Um, creating a safe and healthy environment at your childcare 
facility should always be the top priority as a child care uh, business in a child care business. Uh, caring for kids and providing them with quality early, early childhood education programs comes with a tremendous amount of responsibility. So providing age appropriate stimulating activities is important. Setting up safe and secure environments is important. Following safety guidelines is extremely important. So looking at the slide, uh, you can see, you know, the, the little child is picking up scissors. You can see uh, that uh, the two children are playing with the outlet um, and they have an extension cord there. Uh, really important to keep children safe from common hazards. And I know I've said this, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, one, to, uh, poison toxic things. We need to keep children away from choking hazards, from hot things, number three from uh, number four, sharp things, uh, from uh, number five, pinching hazards, and number six, electric shock hazards. So let's go on um, to the next slide. And as we go on to the next slide, I just want to uh, remind you that you need to be mindful um, that you are respons responsible for each child's physical safety and health while they are in your care. So strictly uh, implement safety guidelines that help prevent accidents such as choking, drowning, and burns. Um, so safe toys are the best toys. So we need to inspect toys regularly. One of the biggest problems of observed by inspectors during yearly licensing reviews of childcare centers is broken or hazardous toys. Uh, some centers allow teachers to take a break from securing toys inside a, a storage closet or cabinet only during free playtime, while others provide designated toy areas with gates instead. Unfortunately, this can result in, in kids playing with improperly stored items. It can also give parents a bad impression of your overall child care environment. So to avoid these types of problems, it's better, better to either fix broken toys or replace them right away. Examine play areas for hazards too, such as sharp edges on furniture and trash or waste that children may accidentally touch or ingest. Replace items that are beyond repair with new ones to ensure a safe play area at all times. So toys are a fun and important part of every child's development, but each year many kids are treated in hospital emergency departments for toy-related injuries. Choking is a risk for kids under three, as mentioned earlier. So toy guidelines. So here are some uh, general uh, uh, guidelines. Avoid toys with long or highly stretchable cords. Look for sturdy, well-made toys. Avoid toys for the tub and pool that have tall pointed parts that could hurt a child if they fall on them. Avoid loud toys. If you have to yell to be heard over the sound of a toy, it is likely too loud and shouldn't be used. Check the label and make sure the toy is age appropriate. Choose ride on toys that suit the child's age, size and abilities. Check that the toy will not tip when the child is using it and that it is stable when weight is placed on any riding point. Use a ride on toy in safe areas that are far away from stairs, traffic, swimming pools and other, other uh, hazards. And be sure to keep toys clean. Some plastic toys can be cleaned in the dishwasher, but read the manufacturer's directions first. Another option is to mix antibacterial soap or a mild dishwashing detergent with hot water in a spray bottle and use it to clean toys, rinsing them afterwards. Okay. So uh, remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So this concludes the PowerPoint for this course. Please note that each of these slides could be printed out and used as posters to help teach a child about safety. Uh, remember that um, on Google and on Pinterest, there are tons and tons of different things that you can um, uh, download and print off and display uh, to keep everyone uh, aware of safety. Uh, I hope that the PowerPoints, um, these pre-recorded uh, videos have 
have clarified your role as a teacher in a childcare setting. It's my sincere hope that you fully understand the health, safety, and nutrition. Um, it, that health, safety, and nutrition is everyone's responsibility. Wishing you all the best. Take care.